For the past couple of services, we've been going over our Passover study. Uh, part one, we learned about how we keep Passover, how we, when we keep Passover, how we come to the count of Passover, how we get there. Part two, we went into the threshold covenant of how, really what that means, how much the Father loved us, and how we ought to honor the Father when we make that covenant by when we step over that threshold, what it, what it really means to make a covenant with a brother. And I apologize, that last service, the audio did not pick up on part two of that Passover, so we're not being able to put it up. If anybody wants to listen to it though, my wife put up, I did, I did basically the same message. I do it every year to kind of give us a refresher of what we're coming up to. So it's the older one, but she put it up, but the last one did not get put up. We were going into part three today, basically going to get into the Master's Supper. Change of plans. We're putting that off. We might go over that new moon or we might go over that next Sunday. We're going to be... I've been in prayer for quite a while on some things that are happening, some things that are going on. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys. I'm going to be talking to the people at home. And I'm going to be like the man on the street corner screaming and crying and giving you a warning. I'm going to basically be talking today... Basically like I'm sitting beside somebody at a hospital that's on the deathbed and pleading with them to get right because I know what's coming. They might not see it, you might not see it, but there's something coming. Before I get into that though, I just simply want to ask, ask you guys, just like I said, before I dive into that, what is prepping? Not nothing scriptural. I'm just talking about. I noticed that movement kind of went on to prepping. Yeah, I noticed that me, me and my wife, that kind of. Well, y'all put your hands down. I'm gonna call on you. Hang on. <laughs> I noticed that kind of started up in the early 2000s. Me and my wife really got introduced to it in really mid 2000s. But I mean, I noticed it kind of got popular as far as coming on TV, coming on, I guess, you, YouTube and. What are you prepping for? What is prepping? What I, what I would call this. I'm basically giving a warning. I've been in prayer. There's been dreams by children, our children, other people's children, people that we know, people that we've been in contact with. That has been confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. The title of this today is There's a Storm Coming. And I want everybody here to listen to me. There is a storm coming. Everybody that's listening at home, there is a storm coming. And by what you guys just told me, by what Sister Ann just told me, I have this written down. You better not be just prepping physically, but you better start prepping spiritually. The time's here. Why do you prep? Every one of y'all just answered that. Basically for an insurance policy. Basically preparing for something that's coming. You have to learn the ways of old to survive what is coming. The old ways are the better. I've heard this my whole life of judgment is coming. Judgment's coming. Oh, he's coming. I hate, to, I hate to tell you, brothers and sisters, judgment's here. It's not coming anymore. There's a storm in the horizon, and if you're so fogged up and messed up by the world right now, if you can't stand out there and look and see what's coming, you better get your spiritual life prepping a little bit better because there's something coming. It's time to wake up. Learn the ways of old. Has anybody ever heard that? Learn the ways of old? Is that kind of... I think there's a scripture verse about that. Is it Jeremiah 6.16? Mm -hmm. 
Learn the ancient paths, which is the way to what is good. Then take it and you will find rest. Proverbs 22, 28. I love that verse. Do not move the entry boundary marker that your fathers have set up. Quit trying to change Yahweh's word is what I'm basically trying to tell you here today. Quit trying to manipulate his word to fit the lifestyle that you want to live. Start learning the ways of old, period. Confirmation, 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 confirmation. Before I even open my mouth, I'm telling you when I'm reading verses like that, my spirit man is talking to me. That's all it boils down to. You need to be more spiritual. You need to pray for your spirit man. The time's coming where you're going to have to rely on your spirit man. Um, these people that take scripture and are so literal, I've been listening to them and listening to them. They do these little podcasts. They do all these different little things. And I ain't got nothing against that. They're... Study your word, but don't be so literal that you just can't understand what the Spirit's trying to tell you. You'll take some of these same guys that are so literal, and you'll do something as simple and tell them to pray over a meal, and they don't know how to do it. They'll say that it ain't a commandment out of Scripture. Are you serious? That before. It's in Luke, it's in Acts. Before they broke bread, they blessed it. I'm not even going to read those to you. I'm not even going to address that right now. But I'm just telling you, I love these people. But it's time we start listening to the set apart spirit. You're going to need his direction in what's coming now more than ever. Because what's going to happen if you can't get on your podcast, if you can't get on YouTube, if you can't even get on TV, and you actually just have to... Do it the old timey way and actually open your scripture up. You're gonna to have to need some guidance. You're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to pray to interpret some things. The reading I've done for the past couple of weeks. But this stuck out to me. Matthew 24, 6. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. What's going on right now? And I know there's going to be some people that are saying, oh, this has already happened. This applied back in the... This is what happens when you pray before you uh, start reading your scripture and you pray for guidance. He'll, he'll kind of reveal some stuff to you through his scripture as you're reading. This really stuck out to me. Wars and rumors of war. Well, Father, that's going on right now. If I, but that's... Just turn the TV on, turn on the radio. See that you're not alarmed because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There again, have you turned the news on? Have you seen NATO in the past couple of days? I'm telling you, there's a storm coming. There will be famines. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. What's going on right now? We're a family of seven. She calls yesterday on the way home. Hey, Dad. Or Mom. They're only rational. We can only buy two packs of chicken tenders. If you can find them. Exactly. They're just what Brother, Brother James just said. If you can find them. Joe Biden just said it yesterday. I was listening to uh, whatever his announcement or whatever he was doing. The United States is going to face a food shortage. Out of your commander in chief's mouth. You've heard this go on, at, or I have, as I've grown up all my years. Oh, there's famines. Oh, that's over in Africa. That's over in there. And, you know, we're so used to eating Cheetos and sucking on Fanas and playing our video games, we're not really comprehending that we're fixing to get hit with a famine. It's already here. Let me keep reading. And earthquakes in various places. Some translations actually say in divers' places. Has that already happened? Yeah. Wait a minute, there's some tsunamis that just happened. There's some volcanoes that just erupted. <laughs> mm -hmm. All these events are being beginning of birth pains. Now, I want to say that about that earthquake thing. Go look that up on 
on whatever the little earthquake deal and you can see how many earthquakes are happening right now all over the world and it's the way they blow it up and the little dots all over it they're happening every hour they're happening every day it's going on right now all right for the birthday <laughs> verse 9 then they will hand you over for persecution and they will kill you you will be hated by all nations because of my name. That's been going on. There's Christians right now, or not right now, excuse me. There have been Christians over the past years. The Muslims and all them line them all up and behead them over there in the Middle East. There are Christians over in Africa that have been captured and tortured, held hostage. There are Christians over in China. You don't let you talk over there about any of this. It's happening stuff. right now, and I'm not. Tra well, I am trying to scare you. I don't. I don't really care. There's a storm coming. You're gonna hear me say that over and over. There's a storm on the horizon. Verse ten. Then many take offense, betray one another, and hate one another. I can just take that verse right there. That's happened in our ministry for about the past two years. You cannot even say one thing to somebody without them taking offense, tucking their tail, and running. Sorry to break the news. People will hate one another. Yes, we pray for them. We pray for everybody that left every night. And every, that door is always open for whoever wants to come back. People will hate one another. I've seen that for the past two years out here. That people actually just can't even stand each other. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. That's murder. Mm -hmm. That's just in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Hate to break your heart, you ain't going to make it if you hate somebody. Mm -hmm. Had one young lady hate, it, hate so bad, literally single-handedly tried to take this ministry down. Call after call after call to everybody that we know, everybody that's in the fellowship, people we hadn't even met. Calling. Still love them. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. I don't want to mention any names, but I can just tell you right now, if you ever go to anybody's church or listen to a sermon... And it's more of a motivational, uplifting speaking. And the time you leave there, you go out and you're feeling all good, wonderful. And then you actually start listening and think, or start thinking, they didn't even crack a Bible open. Mm -hmm. That ought to tell you something. They're not warning each other. The pastors aren't warning their flock. They're not feeding their That's sheep right. and they're not mm -hmm. protecting their flock. Thank you, sister. Yes. Ooh, now we're getting into verse 12. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be delivered. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. You better start lining up. With his ways and not your ways. Because did you hear that? Because of lawlessness. Because of lawlessness. Don't care what kind of degree you have. Don't care how many years you sat in seminary school. Lawlessness. I'm trying to tell everybody is you better start lining up. What does everybody in this room, everybody, list, everybody on the face of this earth, what do we all have in common? We all have an appointment one day. We all have an appointment. And Brother James just said it. Brother James said this earlier too. Is your house in order? Not only just your physical house, but is your house, is your temple in order? Have you got things prepped? Are you prepared? Hebrews 9, 27 reads, And just as it is appointed for all people to die once, and after this judgment, it's pretty simple. Are you ready for your appointment?
It's time to get serious. I don't know if I mentioned this, but there's a storm coming. It's time to get serious. <clears throat> Times are fixing to get tough. Times are already tough. Cost me ninety dollars. It take it cost me a hundred dollars just to get to work every day now. Mm -hmm. Times are getting tough. Just like we said, because of lawlessness, not following his ways, because you're wanting to follow your ways or however you're interpreting this and that. You better start getting serious about obeying your daddy. I don't know if anybody, I mentioned this a minute ago, I don't know if anybody can tell, but I'm, I'm basically just trying to put the fear of God in some people. And, you know, I can back that up because Proverbs 9, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Guys, it's time to stop straddling the fence. Brother Arnold said this many, many years ago. If you got one foot over here and you got one foot over there, your backside's on the fence. Pick one. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's coming. It's here. Can't wait till the last minute. Quit acting like a rebellious child and trying to manipulate his word to fit your needs. With that being said, let me throw a little scenario at you. If you guys was to adopt a 14 year old child and he comes into your house, is he gonna go obey I'm your word? I'm trying to tell you is if you're adopted in, if you're grafted in, you gotta obey the rules. Love you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally. But you're going to obey the rules of the house. There's conditions. Mm -hmm. Like Brother Tavo said just a minute ago, I've got that in my notes. If you line up with his word, you ain't going to be left in the dark. What makes you think if you're not lining up with his word and obeying his commands, and when times get tough, all of a sudden... Everything's going to get better. When you turn the news on about them poor old people in Ukraine with buildings getting blown up, they're just running out the street. They don't know where to go. You better hope you're lined up. And it's very easy to do that. Once you're saved, we've gone through this multiple times, once you're saved, how can we line up? Well, Scripture gave you a perfect example of someone to follow. Amen. We need to be simply acting more like Him. There's a lot of people that don't understand this, but do you realize that Yeshua, that Jesus, if we're to be like Him, what did He walk around teaching and preaching? I hate to break your heart, guys. He was a rabbi. He taught Torah. He taught the old ways. He taught his father's commands. People are around nowadays talking about that um, it's okay for uh, me to love this way and love that way, love this way, because Yeshua never pre preached on it. He didn't have to. His father already addressed it in the Old Testament. Period. Because those were the commands Paul, the Torah. He ate what you were saying earlier, sister. He had a certain diet that he followed. He had certain Moedims that he followed. So if I'm to act more and more like him, and he is my example, I love that on that, whatever that show was or whatever. How come everybody does the opposite of what he does? Think about that just a minute. Rebellion, a rebellious child that wants to do what they want to do. Spoiled brat. Yep, thank you. 
It's not me, it's Scripture. You know, there's somebody else that tries to teach you to do the opposite too. The adversary. Does that make any sense? I just went over that. If he is our example, why are we do everything the opposite of what he did? What he stood for? I don't understand. I don't understand that. Do you think if he come back one day and you prepared a meal for him and you say, "Hey, brother, come on in here and let's eat." It's Easter, by the way, and that ain't got nothing to do with you. That's, but we're gonna sit down and eat, and then I'm gonna serve you ham. Does that even? I, I don't understand people's mentality. I'm telling you, I ain't never felt it like I've never felt before, but I'm telling you, I can see the storm. Mm -hmm. I was telling people back in 2008, 2010, when we went through the fire, I think you, you and I have talked about it, y'all have gone through that. Mm -hmm. And I told people back then, you think this is bad, you ain't seen the one that's coming. Mm -hmm. I was saying that back in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I've been quiet about it. And I usually don't do this, but this ain't coming from me today. This is your public broadcast emergency network announcement to everybody. There's a storm coming, I'm telling you. Let me give you a few examples of how to be like him through Scripture. 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 3. This is how we are sure that we have come to know him, by keeping his commands. Hmm. The one who says, I have come to know him, yet doesn't keep his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly in him, the love of God is perfected. This is how we know we are in him. Verse 6, come on. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. If you ever have anybody come, I'm going to just... Throw this out there. If you ever have anybody coming up to you saying you're not supposed to obey his commands and you ever want to read, remember that verse. Remember one, two, three, four. That's all you got to do. Why am I saying that? First John chapter two, verses three through four. One, two, three, four. It's that. Just remember that. If you ever... It says right here, we are to walk like him. He is our example. Philippians 2, 5. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. I'm reading out the Holman Christian version on all of these. Fixing to get in a rapid fire, sorry. 1 Corinthians 11, Paul speaking. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Sorry, all you guys. Paul kept Torah. Yes, he did. <laughs> Paul kept feast days. He said it himself. What you're not understanding is that Paul did whatever he had to do to get that person saved first. Amen. Then he would teach them the old ways. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. I'm tired of people trying to manipulate his word to try and fit their needs. Oh, here's another one. First Peter 2.21. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you. Somebody said this earlier. Leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. We're examples. Plain and simple. We said this earlier. I don't know if it was on this. We're examples. He's going to know you by your fruits. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love hmm, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now I'm talking to some Torah people right here. Talking to us Torah. Sometimes it's hard to love. But we're to walk in love. No matter how much we get beat down, no matter how much we get trampled on, no matter how much they talk about us, we are here to love one another. Be careful who you hang around too. 
1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be led astray. Evil company corrupts good habits. Be careful who you're hanging around. And, and I know, I know he was, Paul was quoting a poet in that one too. You'll have to look that up. He was actually quoting a, a poet and a, a back then on that one. But that applies to us too. That uh, Be careful who you hang around. Because I can tell you that. You remember back when you were in school, back, or even adults now, back when you was younger, you never know who you'd hang around, you'd be just like them. You don't come in and make a stand. Two weeks later, you're dressing just like them, you're looking just like them, you're talking just like them, you're drinking just like them, you're acting just like them. Be careful who you're hanging around. Be careful who you're entertaining. John 13, 13 through 17. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. He's simple, simply talking about being humility, humble. You can interpret that in many ways as you want to, but I'll give you kind of a little example. When is the last time you actually sat down with somebody that was having problems and actually just shut up and listened? And didn't make it about you? There's people out there hurting. Sometimes I just need somebody to listen. Just, sometimes we just need to be there for people. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. I'm just giving you examples of how our Savior walked this earth. To put off your, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former, former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, when you're saved, Sister Karen was talking about this earlier, when you're saved, your old self dies away. If I can't look at you and tell that you're saved, if I can't look at them Facebook comments and tell that you're saved, you ain't put away your old self. You will know them by their fruits. And my favorite one, John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. How in the world are you going to twist that around to where you can live any old lifestyle you want to live? I'm curious. After everything that I've been listening to for the past couple of weeks, how do you, what do people think, people that keep Torah, what do they think that we do? I mean, I'm asking, what do they think, what do you think keeping his command, we keep his commands? Another story, another, another time, another time, another time. It's simple. I'm sorry, sister, go ahead. I was going to say that children nowadays aren't being taught to obey their parents. Mm -hmm. If you can't obey your parents, you are not able to take that Come step on. to obey the heavenly Come Lord. on. You, they don't have no respect for authority. There's no fear anymore. It's done away with. We're saved by grace. Oh. Uh, no. You got to obey the rules of the house, period. I'm going to close with that. But I am going to say one thing to people that always try to manipulate Paul's writings. Paul doesn't contradict this. Uh, Romans 2 8. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. 
Sin and death. Not the rest of the rules. From sin and death. That don't do away with the rest of His commands. And what I mean by people get mixed up with that, Paul's not going to contradict himself because he just said in Romans 3.31 where he's talking about faith. Do we then cancel the law through faith? Absolutely not. Then you have the other group that want to tell women to be quiet, hush, and oh, you can't, oh, don't you say nothing to me. I'm a man, you're a woman, shut up. Romans, I believe, is it 16? How does he address that? Oh, I hope I'm right. Do you have Romans 16, Sister Ann? How does that one start off if I'm remembering correctly? Romans 16 starts out, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church. Oh, she's a worker in the church. He's addressing her as a worker in the church. And if you look that up, she was a deacon. Another subject, another day, but where do you stop? Where do you draw that line that a woman needs to be quiet? Don't even let her come to church if she's supposed to be silent. Keep her silent. Don't let her do a testimony. Don't let her sing. Don't let her do praise and worship. Teach her at home. That's the goofiest thing I think I've ever heard in my life. I want to read that from Paul one more time about that Romans 3.31 where it says, do we cancel law through faith? And it says, absolutely not. What does the rest of it say? On the contrary, we uphold the law. We uphold the law. Everybody listen one more time. This is a warning. There's a storm coming. We better make sure we're lining up with His ways, not our ways. We better make sure we're... I got somebody amening me and praising back there. Somebody is agreeing like you ain't never agreed. Telling you, you better make sure your affairs are in order because some of you are fixing to get tested. Some of us are fixing to get, go through some things. You better make sure you're spiritually prepped. You better make sure you're physically prepped. You better make sure you, you, your stuff's in order because he's done sent warning after warning after warning after warning. The time's here. The Father's tired of it. There's some people that probably ain't going to agree with me on this, but there's been a lot of churches to get closed down. And in the past, this was a brother that was praying and prophesying the other day. It might be somebody, it might be him shutting the churches down because he's sick of it. And it's time for his remnant to come out. It's time for his remnant, for his people. It's time for his people to stand up. It's time for his people to rise up. It's time for us to act like Titus, for his remnant to come up. Right there at the end of Titus, where. We have something like this and we're training people and then we start going to town to town to town and appointing elders and appointing remnants to start teaching His Word and everybody rising up like never before and teaching what this book says and not teaching what man's trying to twist it to be. Amen. Let's all stand and close and pray and not only pray for us, but let's pray for this country. Pray for us.